I have two comments after that uh, presentation. Number one, now you know why I didn't really want her to speak because she's far more eloquent than I. And number two, Mike, I'm not taking your advice. I'm going to go ahead and speak anyway yeah. after my wife has spoken. Uh, I do want to make just a couple more comments about the interim ordinance. And, and I do want to emphasize that, that you're adopting an ordinance that applies to the whole county, not an ordinance that has anything to do should not really be considered as an ordinance that affects one project which has already vested. You're not going to deal with this project. This project is vested and is going forward under consideration under the building permit process. What you're dealing with now is the possibility, and the possibility only, of additional applications in the next six months for buildings larger than 10,000 square feet. And I want you to please remember that what you are being asked to do is to basically take away a property right from all of this county. And the property right you are being asked to take away is the ability that currently exists for any, well, it doesn't currently exist because of the emergency ordinance, but it will, for any property owner to come in here and ask to put a larger than 10,000 square foot structure on his property. Enactment of this interim ordinance is taking that property right away from all of the county. And that is a significant step because you are effect affecting people's property rights. I want to note that the current situation was created Ron Richards briefly spoke to the original SEPA. Uh, the original SEPA for the county's zoning ordinance and comprehensive plan were done in 1995. The situation which currently exists in which my client was able to apply for a more than 10,000 square foot building. And it, for your consideration, it is utterly irrelevant whether that's a considered labeled motel or a hotel, we can argue definitions forever whether she came in and said, I want to build a 30,000 square foot residence. It is utterly irrelevant because under the ordinances as they currently exist, both the comp plan and the zoning ordinance, that is permitted. And it has been permitted for 21 years. What is the sudden emergency? What is the sudden necessity that you adopt an interim ordinance what has happened? One application for a building larger than 10,000 square feet. I want to correct a couple of things. There are buildings larger than 10,000 square feet already existing in your rural zone. Two years ago, the Department of Community Development recommended that the Fairview School, 28,000 square feet, be converted by the conditional use permit to a marijuana growing operation. They weren't that concerned about 10,000 square feet two years ago. It is in fact a knee-jerk reaction to my client's application that has caused this to come forward. I ask you and urge you to set aside that knee-jerk reaction and to think long and hard about the fact that you're being asked to take away the right of anybody in this county, anybody who comes into this county who wants to build something larger than 10,000 square feet. I've lived in this county for over 60 years. I'm an attorney. My job as an attorney is to help people follow the laws as they exist. To get those laws amended if they need to be amended it is, my job is also to have people do what the laws permit. And it is not my client's fault that the county's laws currently permit her to do what she wants to do. That needs to be corrected if that's what you decide. I don't disagree with that. If that's what you want to decide, it needs to be corrected. Fine. But it also needs to be corrected properly and the proper method using the proper procedure. I would ask you, ask you to go take a look, for example, at your comprehensive plan. 
adopted in 1995. I specifically ask you to look at section 31.01.500, which describes the public participation that occurred in the adoption of that plan. That plan was adopted pursuant to the Growth Management Act. If you read the Growth Management Act, the Growth Management Action is replete with requirements on counties for public participation in the drafting of the growth management plan and the, and the ordinances for implementing that plan in each of the counties. I would submit that that is because the legislature recognized that legitimization of planning and the Growth Management Act development regulations under that act required massive amounts of public participation. You are being asked to adopt an interim control with what amounts to minimal participation. It is unfortunate, and I would have hoped for more people to be here, it is unfortunate that the vast majority of people were here to speak to just the one issue. The ordinance affects the whole county. There has not been any kind of an outreach to the whole county to find out what everybody else thinks about, other than a lot of people who don't want this one project. That may well be a legitimate concern, but it needs to be handled not through an interim ordinance affecting the whole county. So I would argue and submit that you not adopt this interim ordinance. I think the suggestion of a couple of people that perhaps one way to deal with this is to require some of these kinds of applications to go through the conditional use process might be an appropriate way to handle this. The conditional use process requires as of the standards for a granting of the conditional use that the hearing examiner must determine that each of the proposals before him, if they're in a rural zone, complies with the comprehensive plan's definition of rural character and rural development. And he has to make findings of fact to support a determination that the particular project complies with those requirements. And in fact, I can cite back to a couple of cases where I've had where the hearing examiner denied applications in rural zones on the basis of bulk problems, which is he denied them on the basis that the buildings being proposed, specifically referring to I think about 20 to 25,000 square feet of greenhouses for marijuana production, where he found that those were out of scale with the neighborhood. I think if you want to make this an issue, that's the way to make it an issue. Make it a conditional use permit, let people seek the permission to do so, and consider the bulk issues in regards to whether it compromises those definitions of the comprehensive plan. Thank you very much. I will speak briefly. I'd like to bring up a name, which I wonder if people are familiar with. Rose Draper. Anybody know Rose Draper? Now, Mr. Lawson, you should know Rose Draper. She owned all this property way back. In fact, well, she ran a resort there, and I owned the last cabin from the resort. Now, Rose, when she sold her properties, she always sold an easement. Now, the biggest owner of the property, Kevin Barn, tried to find all the easements attached to this property, and gave up. There are easements, Mr. Lawson has an easement, he comes from the south and the north, and three properties next to this property, mine, well, the names are important, three up, they all have easements. Now, Mr. Barn is looking around, he says, how many of these are there? He found easements up beyond these four properties on East Quimby Road, people who feel they have an easement along an undefined path that runs north to south, East Quimby Road to the beach, for beach access. It's an undefined path. It's actually in the deed. The path is not defined. So, across the street of Ashton, we have, well, who's counting? Approximately 60, is that right, guys? All the way up, I'm sorry? 11 homeowners. 11 homeowners, and they all in their deeds, whether it's right or not, and there's arguments both ways, they have access across this property on an undefined path. 
just relaxing, taking up to the north and south. We have access to the beach along this path. Our path is time. Very simple. So if you're going to build, well, that's what the heck, 64,000 square feet on this property. Trust me, you would have room for a north, south, or east, west path. And do you really want 11 households, Mr. Watson? Is that right? Do you want 11 households of people or who knows, 12 households along East Wind Road running across your property? Put that before your client, Mr. Miller. Easement. Thank you.